Hi there, folks. Welcome to another episode of What's Going On in Illustrator. I'm Jason, and I want to show you how Type in a Path works. First of all, you can have an opened or closed path. Doesn't make any difference. And I know this kind of looks like this kind of weird face with this grimace here, but you know what? Let's have some fun with this. Come on. I'm going to go to my Type tool in my toolbar. You have a whole list of tools. I made it a little bit easier and I did a tear off, which allows me to click on the tool, move over to the right vertical bar, and then let go. And that's going to give me my tear off of all my tools. Basic type tools, this is where you click. If you've ever done any type in Illustrator, you've probably used the type tool. This is the area type tool to put type inside a shape, circle, you know, a triangle. This is the type on a path tool. The type on a path tool looks like one of those blow up tube things that you see at a car dealership or a big box store grand opening and the arms flailing. Well, this is the type on a path. And in order to make the type on a path work, what I need to do is where those arms are attached to the torso, I need to touch that area onto my shape to activate my path. This tells it that this is the path that I want to have type on. Now I'm going to type something on here, like type on a path. I'm going to select all that type on a path, go to my character section of my properties panel, and I'm going to select something nice and tasty and chunky and delicious like this. I'm going to make the type a little bit larger, and there's my type on a path. You will notice that the path disappears. You can't have the stroke on a path and keep the type on a path as well. So here's my type on a path, and in my paragraph formatting, I can have it left justified, centered, or right justified on the path. Now the place where I went in and I clicked is my initiation point. That's where I started, and the type went around the path. Now a really easy way of moving your type on a path is halfway between your start point, and then coming all the way back around to your end point, is this little joystick. And you can find this joystick by hovering over it, and it shows up like a cursor. It looks like a thumbtack. And I can click on this, and I can drag this little cursor around to have my type go around my entire object. Now, I like this feature because it allows me to very quickly put my type on a path wherever I want to. Now, if you do go in, and you do work with your start and your stop points here, and your start and your stop points are shown by this little arrow here. The left is my stop. The right arrow is my start point. And this allows me to set my boundaries or my stops, the little bump stops or walls. If I set my stops too close together, I'm going to get a red dot in here, a red plus telling me that there's more type on the path that I can't see. If I pull these open, this allows me to basically set my start and my stop. And I can use those to control where the type sits on a path, but it's a lot easier just to find that center joystick right here and be able to move the type on a path. Now you would think that these little squares right here, and I'm gonna zoom in and show you, these little squares right here you think are handles. Those aren't handles. You actually have to go and just simply click right on the path here in order to move that. That is text linking. If you click on it, like I will, then it wants to connect to another text in the path there. And it's like, oh my gosh, then you delete it. And you're like, okay, what's happening? Well, if that happens, you know what? Just go back to your type tool and pretend that another happened. Okay, panic, but won't do you any good. So we will show you how that feature works, but don't click on those as a handle because it's not a handle. Now, type in a path can happen on any shape. So if you have a square, sure. I can select that or even not select it. It doesn't matter whether it's selected or not. Take your type on a path tool, tell it where you want it to go, and there's your type on a path. You can make it larger and smaller. And there's my start and my stop little bumps. I can move those along. So there's my start, there's my stop. Halfway in between is gonna be my joystick. And I can slide this all along. Now, one interesting feature with this is maybe you want the type inside the path. So if you grab the joystick and then flip it inside, this allows you to flip the type to the inside of your path just by grabbing that joystick, okay? There's the joystick, grab it out, outside, inside. 
Third, I want to show you type on an open path. So there's my open path. Select my type on a path tool, click on that, and there's my type. There is my type on a path, and it looks great, and I love this so much. Oh, whoops, look, we ran out of space. So watch this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom in here, take this type in a path, and I'm going to duplicate it. Hold down my Option or Alt, and I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to go, and I'm going to get rid of all my type in a path, so I have just that path that's waiting for me. You'll notice that there's a red plus here. Let me zoom in on this so you can see. You can see there's a red plus here showing me that I, my type is overset. If I go in and I select that plus right there and I click on it and I get my loaded cursor, I'm going to go back and I'm going to find my type or my path right here. You can show, see I have that link. This allows me to then link to another path whether it's an opened or closed path, doesn't make any difference, okay? It could be a shape or an open path here. This allows me to link the text together. So if I'd like to have text that's curly, I can do that, but I have to have a path in order to do that with. And so if I create another path here, just like this, and then I use my curvature tool and I do another fun path right here, there's my path, and I click on this path, click on the red plus, showing me that I've got more going on. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get to that little plus right there because there's a lot going on at the end. I know it's like, okay, you know, this is a video on how to do it. There it is. Now I got my loaded cursor. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to find my line right there. It's here someplace. I know I drew it. There it is. Highlight the path, put it right along there. So here, what you're looking at here are the text threads in between these paths. So I can have multiple paths here, open or closed, linking all the text together. Now I also have type and a path options. If I'd like to play around with the style of the text, I'm going to select my text and a path, go under the type menu, go under my type and a path. I've got different styles, but I'm going to open up the dialog box just to make it nice and easy. Click the preview button. What we're looking at here is rainbow, kind of like bands of a rainbow. I've got skew. Ooh boy. 3D ribbon. Yikes. Stair step. Ouch. And then gravity. Gravity and um, rainbow look virtually the same. So I'm not quite sure why there's different ones. I can flip this just by going in and using the flip tool. So if I don't want to use my little joystick to pull it in right there as well. Now we can also align this type to the path. So right now the type the baseline of the type is aligned to the path or to the center here or to the A sender or the D sender. Well, I'm going to align this to the baseline right here and I'm going to show you something interesting because if I want to create a logo that says type on and then another circle here that says a path, I need to go in and I need to take out my type here and I need to put my path, my type on a path here and grab that joystick. So there it is, type on. And then what I need to do is I need to copy this circle or create another circle the exact size. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to choose edit and then paste in place. So it's going to put it right on top of itself. You see that? Okay. Now with my type and a path tool, I'm going to select that and I'm going to choose a path. You can't see it very well because I've got two circles exactly on top of each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my joystick here and I'm going to run this around the bottom to the inside, flip it to the inside here. And okay, there it is. Great. And now if I align these circles up here to each other, it I've got kind of like this circle and this logo. But the problem is, is that the word type on is sitting above or outside the circle and a path is sitting inside the circle. So this is where I can go to my type, type on a path, type on a path, options, and I can say center this on my path right there, okay? So if I center that on my path there, and then I get that, so there's my type on, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a path here, type on a path, options, and I'm going to make sure that I select the right thing here. So I got my type and a path options. 
I'm going to select this A path, go under type, type in a path options. And I'm also going to set this to center here, preview that. Now what that's going to do is that's going to give me a perfect circle. So if I'm doing a logo or anything, I don't have type outside the circle and type inside the circle and making it look kind of weird. Then of course I can always go in and I can always adjust my little joystick here to get that to be where I want it to be, making sure I select the right type in a path and set that all up. So that's just kind of the interesting, one of the interesting unique features that we have with type on a path is being able to center it and create two circles in order to get the type on a top, type on a bottom. So that's just a little bit of fun, folks, that you can have with type on a path. Check it out. See what you think.